Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday service here at Old Saratoga Reformed Church. Um, I want to thank all of you brave souls who chose to endure the eat and come join us and welcome all of you who are watching via Facebook or uh, the links on our webpage. We will be having lemonade on the lawn today provided by Bridget Critelli. Consistory will be meeting on Tuesday evening this week. We will be having another chicken barbecue this coming Saturday, July 30th at the American Legion. There are still opportunities to sign up to help on the sheet in the entryway. This is a first come first served event with no reservations. So we recommend coming early so you don't miss out. Dinners are $15. Next Sunday, our worship leader will be Melanie Booth. Are there any other announcements? I think someone was supposed to. Good morning. In case you didn't hear Pat, our chicken barbecues this Saturday. So come get your chickens from 4 to 5.30, first come, first serve. You don't want to miss out. Um, also, exciting news, um, Terry and I and a few others met to talk about having a yard sale. We're going to have a yard sale. Um, so it's, we're planning to have our sale on September 17th. Um, I'm sure you're all wondering when can you bring stuff. So calm down, calm down. You have to wait a little while. Um, August 22nd is when you can start bringing items. Um, if you would like to start bringing clothes, Terry said she will welcome that anytime starting now. That gives her time to sort through those uh, clothing items. Um, we ask um, you to um, please not bring us furniture. It does not sell and I can't get rid of it after the sale. Um, if you could avoid bringing us sets of china, those are also hard to get rid of. Coffee mugs, please no. And no electronics. Believe me, you'll find lots of things in your house besides those things that I'm sure you still want to get rid of and we'll gladly accept those. Thank you. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of death that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Our sentences today come from Psalm 85. Let us read responsively. You, Lord, showed favor to your land. The fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned your fierce anger. Restore us again, God our Savior, and put away your displeasure towards us. The grace and peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O Christ, let my greatest delight be to see you loved and your praise and glory proclaimed 
especially the honor of your mercy. O oh God, let me glorify your goodness and mercy to the last moment of my life. With every drop of my blood and every beat of my heart, would that I be transformed into a hymn of adoration of you. When I find myself on my deathbed, may the last beat of my heart be a loving hymn glorifying your unfathomable mercy. Amen. Our hymn is number 519, It Is Well With My Soul. Praise the Lord. Join me in our prayer of confession. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts so that we are able to admit to you the fullness of our lives, that which is beautiful and good, and that which is hurtful and hateful. 
We confess that we do not follow Jesus in all that we do. We love with condition. We judge and condemn. We cast the first stone and keep the logs in our own eyes. We do not return to you as the source of our healing. Forgive us, we pray, forgive our sins, and empower us to be the imitators of Christ in love and service. Amen. Hear this assurance of God's forgiveness. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. Let us pray to ask God's blessing on the reading of his holy word. Gracious God, your word instructs us and shows us the way that we should go in our daily walk. Help us to listen carefully to your word. Help us to breathe in the lessons that you have prepared for us this day. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. From Psalm 85, a prayer for restoration of God's favor. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. And from Paul's letter to the Colossians, spiritual fullness in Christ. So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over, triumphing over them by the cross. 
This is the word of the Lord. So I'll start with a couple of definitions and historical notes. Paul opens the Colossians chapter 2 with greetings to the church and those at Laodicea or Docia. If you look at what Laodicea means, it's interesting, I have it spelled two different ways in my notes. If you look at what it means in the Bible, you find as an adjective it means lukewarm or indifferent especially in religion, as were the early Christians of Laodicea, as a noun, a person who is lukewarm or indifferent, especially in religion. I don't know that that's a good thing. For Paul, charisma meant the, the gift of God's grace or spiritual gift. In Paul's letters, not just Colossians, but all of his letters to the fledgling Christian communities spread around the Roman Empire, He wrote of the charismata, or spiritual gifts available to each member of the community. Paul identified nine of these gifts, none of which were leadership. The gifts were interlocked and supposed to serve the church without the need of imposed leadership. By the fourth century after Christ's death, the church had suppressed the notion of charisma deriving directly from the Holy Spirit Conveniently, in its place was a hierarchy hierarchy of church leadership. Charisma survived only in heretical outposts such as prophets claiming direct inspiration. The term charisma then mostly fell out of use before it was secularized in the early 1900s. The first politicians who were characterized as charismatic were Mussolini and Hitler. The first, one characterized, first ones characterized as charismatic in a positive way were JFK and his brother Robert. I'm going to continue my sermon this morning from where our liturgist left off with Colossians chapter 2, starting with verse 16. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility humility, and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connections with the head from whom the whole body, supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ to the elemental elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body. 
but they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. The Apostle Paul spent about five years altogether in jail or under house arrest before eventually being beheaded. During the time he was in prison, he was visited by Epaphras, who founded the church in Colossae, Colossians. Epaphras gave a generally good report of the church, but did indicate that the church there was being influenced by many of the cultures that were coming together and were veering into Gnosticism and other signs of religious syncretism. So a couple big words there. Gnosticism emphasizes personal spiritual knowledge above orthodox teachings and institutions. Although this was a first century, century heretical movement, there are still Gnostic groups today throughout the world, including in the United States. Religious syncretism, which includes Gnosticism, is a combining of different cultural beliefs that happens when different cultures live closely together. The Roman Empire was known for combining their beliefs with local beliefs when convenient in order to legitimize their rule. A more modern example of religious syncretism would be the Unification Church, founded by religious leader Sun Myung Moon in South Korea in 1954. Its teachings are based on the Bible but include new interpretations not found in mainstream Judaism and Christianity and incorporates East Asian traditions. So here in chapter 2 of Colossians, Paul addresses his concern with these practices. In verses 1 through 10, he tells us to focus on Christ and not get lost in worldly philosophies and spiritualism. In verses 11 through 17, he deals with Jewish legalism. Christian Jews wanted newly converted Greeks or other Gentiles to follow their practices, including circumcision. Paul assures us that Christ is our circumcision and likewise is the answer to other requirements such as diet or special holy days. Then Paul addresses mysticism, which includes asceticism, worship of angels, and visions. An ascetic is a person who de dedicates his life or her life to a, pr a pursuit of contemplative ideals and practices extreme self-denial or self-mortification for religious reasons. I'll just mention that one commentary on this chapter I read said, this can be a very challenging passage to in interpret. It contains a number of rather unique images and metaphors, uses words and concepts that are rare or unique in the New Testament, and unfolds in very dense sentences populated with numerous subordinate clauses. So a mouthful or two. Let's talk about how thing, these things might apply to you and I. First, let's change the word judgment into the word influence. Who influences you when you make decisions? For most of my life, there were different categories of famous people who held sway with the general public. There were entertainers, movie stars, singers on the radio and elsewhere. Then there were politicians, governors, senators, presidents. And there were people with great achievements, athletes, scientists, or explorers. Nowadays, there are people who are famous, as far as I can tell, for being famous. Think of Paris Hilton and her family who are famous for, I'm not really sure what for, but they're famous. In the last 10 or 15 years, social media has become a huge part of many lives and has made this influence question a really big thing. There are individuals who are influencers on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, and Twitter. Um, I think, well, I'm familiar with all of them, but I don't participate in about half. Um, 
They're called influencers because thousands of followers watch them or read their posts and are influenced by their choices in makeup, clothing, politicians, pol uh, politics, lifestyles, whatever. There are even Christian influencers. One list I saw included Tim Tebow as the top Christian influencer. You may recognize him as the football player who kneels in prayer after scoring a touchdown. On that same list are other names that I recognize, like Kirk Cameron, the actor, Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham. He runs the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Or you may recognize uh, the names Joyce Meyer or Joel Osteen, who have their own ministries. Another name of a Christian influencer you may recognize is Jim Jones. The Reverend Jim Jones was the founder of the People's Temple Full Gospel Church in Indianapolis in about 1954. The church later was moved to California and then it ended up in Guyana. It was there in 1978 that over 900 church members, men, women, and children, drank cyanide-laced Kool-Aid. Some of them were forced. Children didn't know what they were doing. But the great majority of them did that willingly because they were influenced by their leader. Charismatic leaders exist. We can recognize what Paul called charismata, spiritual gifts of those that we follow and allow to influence our lives. History tells us that sometimes leaders will sometimes start with what seems a good path but then they lose their way, or as humans, make mistakes. Our primary influencer should be Jesus. Paul tells us that any rules or regulations, practices, or celebrations that we follow, even in church, are just a shadow of things to come. Jesus is the reality. Jesus is the leader we should be following. He is our guide through life. He gives us peace and comfort. He gives us strength for our trials. Our song through the ages should always be, Jesus led me all the way. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Lord God, we come before you today humbly, acknowledging our need for you. We thank you for your never-ending patience despite our many flaws and fumbles, Lord, we ask that you guide us as we seek to live out your will in our lives. We know your word is a light unto our path, so help us to seek you out each day, to read your word for guidance and direction. Lord, may your loving hand direct our steps as we go out into the world today. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Our hymn is number 641. All the way my Savior leads. <clears throat>
for prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. We thank God for the life of our friend and lifelong member, Betty Tucker, who passed away on Thursday evening. Betty sang in our choir, and we expect she is now singing in heaven. We extend our condolences to her son, Christopher, our valued minister of music and tech guru, and pray that God will surround you, Christopher, with his peace and comfort. There will be a graveside service for Betty on Thursday morning at the Prospect Hill Cemetery. We continue to pray for Katrina and Corey Helwig's baby, Grayson, who was able to come home this week after having surgery the day after his birth. We pray for the people of Ukraine and for those everywhere who are suffering at the hands of others. We pray for those who are suffering as a result of the intense heat that is affecting people throughout the world. Are there any other prayer requests? Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for all your gifts. We ask that you would be with us as we strive to do your will throughout the world as we go about day to day. We ask that you would be with Christopher and, and his friends and family, uh, and we celebrate the life of, of Betty. Um, we ask that you would reach out and touch those of our congregation who are sick, who are not feeling well, who are stuck at home, who have mental issues, who uh, are just sad. Uh, we ask that you would uh, reach out and help the world today deal with the political issues that seem to be such a problem. Uh, we ask that you would be with the people of Ukraine, uh, touch the hearts of not only the Ukrainians but the Russians and everybody around them and help them resolve this into a peaceful issue. Be with us today, Lord, as we go about your life and remember to pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is number 635, He Leadeth Me.
don't forget lemonade on the lawn afterwards. Stay and meet new people. Meet old people. I'm 70, so I'm old, I guess. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Amen.